3.3 million years ago at Lamequi, um, a pretty famous site, we find stone tools. They're really, really primitive, but they are more advanced than what chimpanzees use today. So you might be thinking, well, what, well, what are they using these tools for, right? 3.3 million years ago, what, what could they possibly be using these tools for? Well, maybe cracking open nuts, or maybe they figured out that you can crack open more than just nuts with a big rock. You can crack open bones. And when you crack open bones, inside those bones, there's marrow that most animals on the savanna aren't gonna bother with. Hyenas will, but a hyena isn't the predator that kills everything. If a lion you know, eats everything off of a corpse and then leaves, there's a skeleton left behind and you as a hominin are capable of chasing off vultures, walking up to it and picking up a bone. Um, and you now know, you're smart enough to know that there is marrow inside that bone. And maybe that happened, you, know, you, you can see this logically, right, playing out. You've got a hominin that's the you know, Australopithecus walking along and they see a bone and it's, it's been trampled by a wildebeest. They pick it up and there's stuff in there that they can eat. And then they put two and two together just as, as you know, a chimp was, is capable of doing, right? And say, okay, well, there's food in this. I can't open this by myself. They, they see other complete non-broken bones next to it. But if you slam it on the ground, like in Stanley, Stanley Kubrick's uh, Space Odyssey, it'll break. And if it's not brittle enough, if you're not strong enough to break it yourself, you can take one of those rocks that you've already been using to crack open nuts and crack open this bone too, and get at the marrow inside. Now, there's a really critical step that, that is going on here, Seth, right? Which is that bone marrow is energetically a powerhouse. All organic material is, which is what are all animal material, I guess I should say is, which is why even herbivores across the animal kingdom will opportunistically eat other animals if they can. Like you, Now, the most expensive organ in your entire body, um, there's two really expensive um, systems in your body. The first is your gastrointestinal system, and that's because it's quite large. But you know, the other one is your brain. Your brain eats a lot. Right. It takes, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 percent of your daily intake calorically goes just to keep your brain functioning. So all organisms are limited by how big, you know, in how big they can grow their brain by the environment in which they live, by the, the food that they have available to them. So what happens when you have a, an australopith living on a landscape that's just figured out how to explode the metabolic budget that they have available to them? Well, now the individuals that are born with slightly larger brains can fuel them. You can innovate with better tools to procure even more animal resources, which means you can grow an even bigger brain, which means you can innovate, which means that you can procure even more animal resources, which means you can get an even bigger brain, which means that you can innovate even more and procure even more animal resources. When tools enter the scene and start to open up this dietary niche for hominins, that's when you see the brain case size explode.